All right. Hello and welcome to our session, Knowledge Equity, a collection of voices to pave the path here at the first completely virtual Wikimania. My name is Lily Iliev. I work as a project manager of public policy at Wikimedia Deutschland at the politics and law team. And together with me, my colleagues Anna Masgal and Nikki Zoina will guide you through this session. Anna is a senior EU policy advisor and Nikki is a senior advisor global partnerships at Wikimedia Deutschland and they will be speaking to you soonish. But first of all, I would like to tell you what to expect in the next 45 minutes. So let's look at the presentation. Let's look at the agenda together. And I hope we will be seeing it in a second. So in the next 10 minutes, just as a reminder, we will say again what is meant by knowledge equity in the context of the Wikimedia movement. And uh, where does this intention come from? What is the strategic importance of the topic? And we will describe why we have chosen a publication. So a collection of voices in the form of essay pieces to work on knowledge equity. And in the following 10 minutes, we will briefly mention the specific topics that the seven women of the Wikimedia movement are currently working on and writing their essays. And then we would like to invite you to an open discussion about all of this and hear from you, your questions, your feedback, what are the projects that uh, you are working on connected with knowledge equity. All right, so let's get started with the term knowledge equity and what goals it is supposed to achieve. Um, and for this, I will hand over to Nikki. Thank you and welcome everyone. Um, so I just want to provide a little bit of context. Um, and actually, I hope we're on the slide on the strategic direction. Yes, we are. Okay, great. So in 2017, the strategic direction was developed as part of a lengthy process to figure out where is this movement going in 2030. Um, and the strategic direction says that we will become the essential infrastructure of the ecosystem of free knowledge and anyone who shares our vision will be able to join us. So that's our lofty vision for, um, for 2030 and not just the vision, but it's a direction we're marching to towards. And there were two pillars um, sort of teased out from that strategic direction, knowledge as a service and knowledge equity. Can you go to the next slide? Um, so knowledge equity um, is described in this context and this is what we're reacting to and this is the context that we're working in with this publication, is that we will focus our efforts on those communities and, and their knowledge that have previously been left out. Um, and that we will welcome people from every background to build strong and diverse communities. So what that means is that we need to break down barriers that um, make it hard for people to join our movement. And those could be social, political, technical barriers. Um, and so this, this publication is starting to think about how can we do that? I, uh, over to you, Anna. Yes, uh, buttons and unmuting, um, as usual, is a bit of a dance. Um, yeah, the, 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 having said that and, and, and agreeing uh, with the fact that the project actually fits into this whole conversation and was probably inspired very much for it, I also would like to say that uh, from my perspective and, and from the conversation of, of my fellow uh, authors, uh, my feeling is also that the project is deeply personal in a way that we all have these conversations with colleagues and allies and friends uh, that circle around those topics because nobody has a perfect answer to on how to do all those things and how to do them with integrity and how to do them sincerely. And uh, when we were debating the topics, we were also saying, well, if there's anything that keeps you awake at night that you think, oh, I could have said that to this person or I could have done this uh, to, to bring it forward, then this is the topic you should uh, you should be writing about. Um, so, so this was a, a, a bit of anecdotal, but but still, I think very real prompt for for the seven people, uh, seven women to get together and and to write, 
each of us writes um, her own um, uh, look out, uh, outlook at it, and we will tell you more about the topics that we chosen. It is, of course, not representative. It is not exhaustive. It is, as I said, deeply personal and coming also from our experiences and different paths of life. Um, there is, of course, an overarching idea to look uh, into, into those topics as an addition to the debate uh, that our community uh, of people working uh, with uh, policy topics, but also other uh, issues that structurally support the work of our movement um, uh, could uh, could add beyond the the basically everyday reactions to events. So so to step back a little bit from from our daily questions to something that is more overarching and more um, uh, I would say on the meta level of of the conversations that we are having, or somehow maybe brings them. Uh, brings a, a bigger context or a broader context uh, to them. Um, and it's important because we are the movement that advocates for uh, creating and curating and preserving knowledge. And, and the feeling is that uh, uh, within our group that we don't do this enough ourselves. So it's also an opportunity for us to actually practice what we preach and to, to look at the thinking in a way that uh, makes it less fleeting and more recorded and, uh, and also up to the debate with uh, everyone who is interested in, in debating those issues. So what's the goal, Lili? Well, the goal of the publication, I would say, is to um, making existing approaches to knowledge equity visible and discussable. And in dealing with, as you said, different aspects of knowledge equity, I think one question especially has come to the center and this question, there it is, uh, seems to us to be essential and also suitable to deal with knowledge equity in a meaningful way. And it is, how do we make room for different needs and new forms of knowledge? And with this question in mind, we have come together virtually over the past months um, and identify topics that particularly concern us. And in the next 10 minutes, we will briefly introduce these topics to you, just to give you an idea what, um, what we are working on right now. And the three of us, myself, Nikki and Anna, we will talk also on behalf of the four people who are not here live with us today. And these are Virginia Diaz Gobernado. She is a communications and public policy manager at Wikimedia España. It's Nafsika Papa Nicolaou. She is a charge de mission affaires publiques chez Wikimedia France, or public uh, public affairs officer at uh, Wikimedia France. Then Marie Louise Gould. She is a project assistant in the politics and law team at Wikimedia Deutschland. And Alison Davenport. Uh, she is public policy counsel at the Wikimedia Foundation. And unfortunately, she cannot make it with us here today uh, live. But we will do our best to speak on her behalf. Um, so, Nikki, you start with your topic. Thank you, Lily. Um, so, the topic that I chose kind of chose me because I ran against it um, for the, all those years that we were working on the movement strategy. The topic of volunteerism came up again and again, and discussions around how can we make sure that volunteers from new parts of the world and from marginalized communities join us. So our movement traditionally is built on volunteerism. And as we attempt to open it up to these new communities and people who come from the global south or from marginalized communities, um, I think it's really worth checking our assumptions on volunteerism. So asking questions like, does this Western Northern model that we built <clears throat> um, our projects on still work in these contexts. Um, if we assume that everyone has the same privilege or the same understanding of volunteerism, um, that in itself may constitute one of those social and economic barriers for people joining us. So in my essay, uh, which I'm still working on, um, I look at sort of our version, the Wikipedia, Wikimedia movement version of volunteerism. I also look at criticisms of volunteerism over the years. And then in search of solutions, I've reviewed some models for volunteer remuneration and looking at sort of what the pitfalls are, what the goal, the, the benefits are, and how that could become a model within the Wikimedia movement. 
So that's my essay. Um, um, and I think I'm also supposed to talk about Virginia's essay. So I'm going to move right into that. Um, so Virginia um, is looking at uh, the community of trans and non-binary folks who also uh, are already part of our movement or who might want to join our movement. And she, in her piece, she will explore how cisgender people can better support trans and non-binary communities in the defense of their rights within the Mickey Media movement. So she's looking at the current situation, what is visible at the current map and what's missing um, in the context of knowledge equity. She, um, she uh, will provide some insights on new research. Um, and also finally, will, she will reflect on possible new paths that we could build towards a more inclusive digital territory. So um, she does this from a cisgender person's perspective. So she doesn't speak for the trans community, but she really would like to look into how can we make um, our projects a safe and welcoming place for those communities. Back over to Lily. That's me, yes. Where I'm speaking for Marie Louise. And her topic is, what does Hannah Arendt have to do with Wikipedia? So something very specific. Um, and she wrote like a super sh short summary that I will read out for her now. So she says, in my essay, I want to discuss what Hannah Arendt, so the famous uh, political theorist, one of the uh, most important political thinkers of the 20th century, or one of them, uh, anticipated about the collaborative authorship of Wikipedia and the importance of plurality for our construction of the world via knowledge and discussion. Arendt coined the term of plurality, which she sets at the center of our speaking and acting and our connection to the world. It is this term of plurality I want to follow to make apparent the importance of diverse perspectives in order to approach objective and nuanced knowledge. Yes, that's what she's working on. And the next topic is what I am working on. It's called the knowledge that is missing three theses for more diversity in the Wikimedia communities. And um, I thought about these three theses on the occasion of a collaboration between Wikimedia Deutschland and a women's network in the German speaking Wiki world. It's called Femnetz. And the goal of this collaboration is to better support female authors in networking and organizing conferences on gender gap and all the detailed questions about it uh, within the wiki world. And the three theses that could maybe be used to stimulate forward thinking for more diversity are uh, thesis one, Wikipedia needs an update like regarding communication culture, the second one is Wikipedia must represent knowledge equity in 2030. And the third one is Wikipedia needs uh, new alliances. So in my essay, I would like to elaborate a bit about which steps are important from my perspective, especially on the part of Wikimedia organizations in order to actively support more diversity in the communities. And now I'm handing over to Anna, I think. Uh, uh, thank you. Um, so uh, my topic is, um, as you can see, um, <laughs> I write about what I know. I'm a uh, senior EU policy advisor, uh, and um, and I want to write about policy and police in the global village, which is uh, the uh, EU legislation and how it actually can help knowledge equity. Um, I my title is a working title, so bear with me for a moment. I'll try to explain. Um, what I mean. Um, so uh, definitely in the EU, because the, the countries uh, co agreed to collaborate together and to cooperate and to create Europe that uh, has no borders um, in, um, in many senses of, of the world, uh, legislation becomes definitely 
one of the key drivers of sustainable change in any area because we can agree together on the principles and on how to make things work better or how to uh, remove some certain barriers. We see it online also that sometimes it's easier to, to travel between European countries than to, for example, access content that originates from other country. Um, and then, therefore, in the EU, I think we have a unique chance to change realities for all people that are in the EU. Uh, and specifically, uh, I, I mean, not only the citizens of the EU, but, but everyone that, um, that is here. Um, and also present it as an example to other parts of the world uh, of how also we can do it in a deliberative manner. Um, interestingly, the premise behind creating the, the United Europe is basically the same as the one behind Internet. If we think of the framework of the global village, Europe also has this dream of uh, a situation where, as our anthem says, um, all people will be brothers. It's not very gender friendly, but the text is old, as you may know. Um, so, so it's worth ex exploring how those two uh, realities come together and what uh, we can actually do to help everyone to take part in the sum of human knowledge and how uh, the EU could do it better. And also specifically, what is the part that our movement can play, not only in being the recipient of that changed reality, but also of being an actor that helps shaping it by the work that we do in um, uh, in taking statements and in presenting our projects, but also in sharing the learning that we have from uh, our corner of the internet, where we collaborate and where we actually include people. So uh, this conversation is ongoing, but uh, uh, but uh, we are already uh, at some milestone of it, and this is what I would like to focus on and and invite people also then to reflect and and disagree with me perhaps. Um, the price of admission uh, is the title of Alison Davenport's um, topic and an essay, uh, how complacency around abuse and harassment can undermine the goals of knowledge equity. This is the, uh, the longer, the byline of, of the title. Um, as you may already know, all essays are uh, very interesting because they look at, at um, those aspects of, of knowledge equity and what can we practically do from many points. I, I believe that Alison's essay has this sort of an overarching view uh, that that is kind of connecting the dots where we are uh, already admitting through many of our projects and actions and discussions around strategy and, and in other processes that there are knowledge gaps on Wikipedia and that our project, um, you know, need to grow more diverse and so does our community of, of editors. And Alison will question the expectation that marginalized, marginalized groups must expect some level of harassing or demeaning behavior as the price of admission online, which basically is to say that, um, uh, that we have also not only practical uh, questions and dilemmas, but also an ethical dilemma, how we can invite people that potentially can have bad experience uh, into, into our, uh, in our space and how we can make sure that this experience will actually be a positive one. Um, and that they are not uh, the guests that nobody wants, but they actually become part of our community and that, and that we truly and, and really make space and, uh, and also question our behavior and our patterns of thinking in order to, uh, to become uh, uh, a better community um, with all who, um, who want to join. So Alison will explore how Wikimedia can potentially avoid some of the pitfalls of social movements that have failed to protect their most marginalized members, um, which, um, as we know, is, is a very uh, current and, and uh, important conversation. And uh, finally, um, uh, excuse me, I'm dealing with buttons here. Uh, a super interesting and super personal take from Nafsika, uh, who uh, uh, is um, a, a policy um, a manager in Wikimedia France, who she joined us at the beginning of the year. Uh, with um, with a very interesting experience uh, dated to, to 2016 when she went to Greece. Uh, Nafsika is Greek and she went to Greece um, in Piro's, Piro's port to help refugees arriving mainly from Syria and Afghanistan during the refugee crisis um, to a transition camp uh, and where nearly 4,000 refugees were uh, placed. And uh, her, herself and a group of other volunteers provided support uh, to have the necessary uh, materials to, to, to live and, and to, to set, settle in the camp, like tents, blankets, and, 
and other material necess necessities, but also volunteers uh, set up several tools to organize life in the camp um, and uh, and um, gave English lessons to to help refugees to to better communicate um, and um, and to be better prepared into uh, exiting the camp and, and and starting a different life. And this is this personal experience that actually prompts her to also think about. Uh, what is the the the, know, the role of of knowledge and uh, and knowledge projects during humanitarian crisis uh, of of this type? This is not the crisis that is going away in any way. Uh, if anything, it will be uh, uh, touching us uh, even more. And of course, especially the people that, uh, for different reasons, have to uh, go away from from their countries. Um, also, what is the role of open knowledge uh, actors for people who really need um, access to information in different ways? That's another question that Napsika looks into. How do we include these people? Because, of course, it, it would be very biased and, and also kind of colonial to say that the only knowledge that there is in this exchange is the knowledge that we have. No, of course not. This is also how the people that come bring their perspective, bring their experience, lived one and also learned one, and how um, this is an important frontier for us to explore and also to open up to those experiences that are also, of course, difficult because they become very personal and, and sometimes also connect with, with uh, traumatic experiences. So how can we truly serve, uh, serve that mission and, uh, and how specifically our movement plays, uh, plays a role and uh, what are the, the challenges that we face and how we can uh, be better allies in those conversations, but also in those practices, because conversation is only the beginning. So this is the uh, the uh, topic that uh, Nafsika will. Uh, I'm, I'm very curious and eager to see uh, the recommendations that she comes up with uh, in that regard. Thank you. Lee. Lily, can you take over? Yes, I think we were thinking about having Nikki to uh, moderate a little bit. Oh, okay. And open the question. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Apologies. <laughs> no problem at all. We have our script. I didn't read the script. Well enough. I'm sorry. Um, okay. So um, we would like to hear from the audience. Um, First of all, if you have any questions and feedback, maybe, and then if we have time, we can go into some of our, our questions. Um, so let us know uh, in the chat, I guess, or in Remo, if you have questions on this project or on the topics. I'm also looking in the other patch right now. Um, and one question that um, yeah, that occurs in the first in the first site is by when would this book be available? Which Wikimedia project do you plan to make it available on? Wikibooks, comments, or wiki source? Shall I take that? Yeah. No, oh, sure. you do, Anna. You probably have a better answer. <laughs> <laughs> well, the, as the project is is a bit of a spontaneous uh, thing and and happens a bit on the on the side of of our regular uh, daily activities, we decided not to send set a hard date. Uh, but what we did discuss is that it would be great to have it ready definitely this year. Potentially having the first draft. At uh, the end of uh, August, uh, which uh, of course, with seven people doing very different things, uh, may go different ways. Um, we don't know exactly yet uh, how it's going to be available because, on one hand, obviously we want to make it open and we want to make it accessible for our community, um, uh, and perhaps it will have just a, a landing page of its own. Uh, but perhaps uh, we will affiliate it somehow with any of the existing projects. I think. It's a bit early to talk about this now because we really need to see the shape it takes uh, in more uh, in more detail to know this. Um, my dream would be also to just publish it as a book, uh, not only to make it accessible online, but to also have the paper version, which of course uh, is is an endeavor on its own. And as as it is um, um, a volunteer-based project, we of course 
you know, have to answer some questions of, of uh, how we can make sure that it's edited correctly then and how to convert, you know, very convenient uh, linking uh, within the online text into something that works in a book and which basically implies editing, right, and, and, and all that. So, uh, and then who could, you know, make it available? These are all the questions that, that we decided to deal with as, you know, as we progress with the content, which is the important part, uh, but definitely um, we will make sure that uh, as we talk about it now, that when it's out, we also find an opportunity to to let everyone know uh, to um, that it's already there um, in, in many ways and, and through our community and beyond it, because I think it's also important that it's not, you know, in the void, but that it actually prompts conversation and that we can be, you know, present and treat it as an introduction to that conversation within the community. And, uh, and also uh, maybe it will inspire other people to create their own uh, versions of, uh, of their own uh, essays or, or however form they, they want to uh, choose um, uh, to, to continue that because obviously it's not exhaustive, it only shows part of the story. Uh, we, we are facing the, you know, the, the fact that uh, we are all uh, from specific background with, uh, with the same skin color, with uh, kind of similar experiences in the way, as different as we are. So also, obviously, it's not something that um, that should be treated as um, as the voice uh, on the topic, but just as as a collection of of, um, of perspectives on it that that can be taken forward and also you know debated and uh, uh, and followed by uh, something that um, that is even uh, more interesting and more uh, diverse. Thank you. Anna. So, as you can see, we have still more questions than answers ourselves, but that's that's good. Um, I would add also that for us, these essays are supposed to be discussion starters. And again, again, like like Anna said, they're not the the truth or anything. They're just discussion starters, and some of them might be a little provocative, um, just to get us more advanced in this conversation about knowledge equity. Um, so I posted our questions um, in both the etherpad and now I'm going to post it in the, in the uh, chat of the Remo. I'm navigating between all these sites here. It's a little challenging. Um, so any thoughts um, on our questions? One is maybe to hear a little bit about projects connected with knowledge equity that the participants are working on. Um, that would be a good first um, thing to answer for you guys. Um, if you have any thoughts, and I know we just covered the topics pretty in a, in a short way, but any thoughts on volunteerism, any thoughts on um, marginalized communities such as transgender or refugees, um, any projects that you're working on that touch uh, these topics. We'd be super interested in hearing about. Um, so feel free to raise your hand in the remo or, um, or right in the chat or in the etherpad. The other question that we we have is basically the question that we're asking ourselves <clears throat> as the, the guiding framework question of the book, um, which is how do we make room for different needs and new forms of knowledge? So we have functioned as a movement that has developed its own rules, its own governance, its own um, ways to work together with volunteers and organizations. And um, the, the lofty vision to move out and welcome anyone who wants to join us from all communities all over the world um, might require some changes and might require some new ways of thinking. So that's where we come from and we welcome any thoughts from the audience. There's 48 people in the audience. I know there's wisdom in this group, so please share it. Well, 
from my perspective, it would also be super interesting just to hear about what you are working on. If you are working on any projects connected with the spectrum of knowledge equity, for example, um, improving the gender gap um, in different ways and forms. And I would be really curious to hear about that. Um, or maybe what is what would be missing in such a publication because um, it can be widened by everyone. So there's uh, there's a question I think in the in the etherpad. Mm -hmm. um, <laughs> to my topic, actually, I'm wondering on the models for compensating volunteers. Does that not sound like divergence from the concept of volunteerism itself? Should they be compensated? Question. Um, yeah, this is this is obviously the key question when we talk about volunteerism, can we even call it volunteerism anymore? And does this idea of volunteerism that we have been so successful with in the global north, um, does it work in the global south? Or does it work as the main basis for co-creating knowledge? Um, you know, what we call it then, and it might not be volunteerism, it might be activism. It might be community organizing, um, but this is yeah exactly the con the kind of conversation I would love to see start. Um, I can say that in global context and the context of humanitarian aid and development aid, those people who do get remunerated are still called volunteers because they get paid less than what they would get paid in a comparable work situation. Um, there is a question from Faye. Any thoughts about correcting an imbalance of sources where national sources may be 95% or 100% biased against the community, what is seen as knowledge? Any ladies want to take that one? Um. I may just offer a few thoughts because that's obviously a big topic that is around and I think it's hard to say now as we are writing it, I think it would be difficult to discuss uh, any of those issues without actually also at least, you know, trying to, to model some responses to the question, what is, you know, what is truth, what is knowledge, how, how we look for it. Um, it's hard to say, you know, I don't think any one of us has this as kind of a key thought, if I'm not mistaken, or, or one of the key things. But but I, I hope that, you know, whatever will be produced can be sort of, you know, also read through that lens. Definitely, if we talk about um, the situation of refugees, for example, just to take Napsika's project, um, you know, um, some of them come from places where, uh, or they flee situations where they cannot actually have their own voice represented, right? In, in many ways. Uh, so, uh, so this is also something that you know we can potentially offer some some solutions to this. Then there's also the issue of traditional knowledge uh, that has different knowledge protocols, as as we may call them, right? Not peer-reviewed uh, or or you know uh, media type of of research and, and validation of sources, but but other ways. So, so this is also where I think you know it would be a pity if if the conversation is advancing without without discussing that. Um, it may also be that part of 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 um, of the conversation that we're having while writing can point us to the situation where openness to to or creating knowledge equity uh, situation actually also means that we are not only open for the content, but we also open for new projects and new ways of working with knowledge, right? So that basically, you know, encyclopedia is a Western knowledge protocol or, or one that comes from originates from Global North and represents our knowledge in a way that we consider um, um, good and unbiased. But 
maybe it doesn't work for other contexts and we have to also be very open in discussing that when we actually mean to make room for spaces. So, so not only the, the content itself that comes, but also that people bring with them, but also the, the projects that actually suit their, their needs better, right? Um, I'm in ongoing conversation with uh, my friend Alejandro who works with the indigenous communities and believe me, they don't need the encyclopedia in their everyday life. They need mobile phones to stick them to trees in Amazons to hear if the forester come, foresters come because it's dangerous to put people uh, there, obviously, uh, as they can be killed. This is the level of technology that is interesting and needed to them, right? So where do we go? Where do we enter with, with our you know, know-how? We cannot figure it out by, by ourselves, right? We have to kind of shut up and listen to, to what the needs are and then we can respond uh, and provide our know-how in service of the communities that are, that are not with us. And I agree that the fact that, um, uh, that we have certain way of looking at knowledge is also a barrier, barrier in itself in, uh, in being together with them. So that would be my uh, uh, initial response to that question. Thank you, Anna. Um, there is another more of a comment from Ashwin in the, uh, in the chats. He says, accessibility needs to be considered as it presents a very real life challenge to those who have accessibility issues. These are not different, different needs, but unfulfilled needs, long recognized, but on which progress has, hasn't been adequate. Um, and I would agree with, um, with Ashwin, absolutely, on that. So let's take this opportunity where we say knowledge equity is important to us, and this is part of where we want to go and address those accessibility issues. Absolutely, I absolutely agree. Um, but I also think that, you know, having this, this um, situation where we wait for the Wikimedia Foundation to fix things is probably not something that we should carry into the future. So it needs to be other ways in implementing movement strategy, empowering other people in the movement. Um, and I understand there's funding streams for that planned. So I think we need to also change the way we, we address our issues um, and not make them something that we wait for the Wikimedia Foundation to fix, but take things into our own hands. That's just my very personal opinion. Um, I'm gonna look at the chat and see if there's anything else that we need to address here. Um, we have about five minutes left, so this would be the time. You can also obviously find us later. Maybe um, um, in the meantime, Nikki, I wanted to add something, um, a very concrete project about um, having also a more effective broader public discussion about what we consider relevant knowledge and whatnot, because I think this um, this issue knowledge equity is for most people super abstract and I think we will only be effective in finding ways to have more knowledge equity if we also have a broader public discussion about knowledge in general and what we consider important to have access to and uh, and so on. And one very concrete thing that uh, Wikimedia Deutschland, for example, is doing is having um, a public event series broadcasted by a, a big radio station and it's called Knowledge Power Equity. And we're trying to have intellectuals talk about what we consider valid, relevant knowledge. And I think this is also important just to make people think about, wait a second, uh, is it encyclopedic, academic um, um, stuff that I consider relevant or is it maybe a little bit more? And I think this is also relevant and I'm super excited about this project, for example, just to give something very concrete. Thanks, Lily. Um, so there's one last question, which is a good last question. Um, what is the desired impact you would like to see after the publication is made available? And how do you see this to become prominent? Kind of, it's kind of an Anna question. <laughs> I mean, I could, I could say a few things about it too, but why don't you try Anna? Sure. 
So, um, uh, I think that a lot when we discuss, right, uh, uh, friends, we also talk about how great it would be to basically start the conversation on those topics. So we can sleep at night, right? <laughs> so we can have those discussions in real life and not only in our heads. Um, and uh, and also, so so that would be uh, that would be the the desired outcome. Uh, one of them. The other is I really hope that you know we can get more of the people from our movement to to record what they think and what they um, and we don't want to get them by making them but by maybe inspiring them and, and seeing ah if those uh, seven women from Europe can do it of course I can do it too right it's uh, uh, please write please record your thinking please record your knowledge uh, please share it with people because it's so fleeting and it's so um, and it's so precious, uh, the experience that we have. And we kind of take it for granted. And of course, we don't have time and it's difficult. And then we, you know, and, and writing is difficult sometimes. Uh, but if you don't want to write, record a podcast, it doesn't really matter. But one of, I would love this to see personally as an effect that, that people get more active in basically speaking their, their truth and, and sharing their experiences and connecting the dots that they see um, so that we don't only, you know, argue on internet and, and get angry at each other, but that we actually can, you know, sometimes agree to disagree, sometimes, you know, have a basis to, to change our thinking and also change our mind. And I think, you know, this is maybe the, the, the most traditional way to do it, that, uh, that we sit together and, and, and create a publication. But, uh, I mean, it's as good as any, right? And everybody will have their own idea how to do it. So to me, that would be a great effect, that there is actually um, this ripple effect coming from this for for everyone that we continue the conversation and that we also you know rec record that knowledge and that thinking in um, between us so we're out of time thank you anna thanks everyone for listening please reach out to us um and ho hopefully we've started some conversations here thanks so yes. much any last words <laughs> thank you <laughs> have a good weekend you know Oh yeah. <laughs>